we'll be using this shot and we'll start right at five seconds. So let's bring it to the comp icon to make a new composition and move the CTI to five seconds and hit B for Bravo to set the in point of the work area. Right click, go to trim comp to work area and let's track the eye with Mocha. Make sure that the layer is selected, go to effect, Force effects Mocha, Mocha AE, and hit the button to launch Mocha. Up here, we can switch between different workspace. Let's go to Essentials and two keyboard shortcuts that will definitely help you out is the letter Z to zoom in or zoom out and the letter X for the hand tool. Now let's go to the X spline elliptical tool, click on it and click and drag to create a circle. Hold on to shift to make a perfect circle. Let's zoom in, hit control A to select all the points and let's reposition this. Now for the track motion options, we're only interested in the translation. So let's deselect skew, rotate and scale. The duration of the transition will only be a second long. So we only technically need to track this for a second. We'll track a little more than a second long, just in case we need those extra frames. Now let's go to this button and let's analyze and track forward. Let's hit spacebar and let's switch to classic workspace. And what we'll do is we'll zoom out and let's check it out. We're right at seven seconds, that's perfect. I'm gonna click on this button to set the out point of the layer. And let's double click and let's rename this layer to I and let's close Mocha and let's save it. Back in After Effects, let's create a null object. And let's name this I Tracker. Go back to the clip. Let's go to Tracking Data. Go to Create Track Data. Select the eye layer, hit OK. It'll load all that tracking data. For export option, let's switch it to transform. And for the layer export, let's go to the eye tracker. Hit apply. Now let's go to the null object. Hit U on the keyboard to make sure that it created all these keyframes. Perfect. Let's trim the out point of this layer, Alt right bracket. And what I'll do is zoom in, move the CTI back to five seconds and make sure that you deselect by clicking outside. Let's go to the ellipse tool. And what we'll do is click and drag, hold on to shift so we can make a perfect circle and hit alt control home to move the anchor point right to the center. What we can do is go to the selection tool. Let's reposition this if needed. And this layer, let's call it circle mat. Let's place it right above the layer. We'll parent it to the eye tracker. So it moves and let's go to the clip using track mat. Let's select alpha inverted. And if we toggle the transparency grid, it should be transparent. Perfect. Now what we can do is we can feather the edges, go to the circle mat, go to effect, blur and sharpen and select fast box blur. And for the radius, let's make it five. Okay, go back to the project window and we'll be using this shot, let's bring it to the comp icon and we'll use it from 10 seconds, hit B for Bravo for the end point and we'll go all the way to 20, hit N for November to set the out point and right click, trim comp to work area. Now right at 13 seconds is where we'll start the transition. So let's add a marker. And let's bring in the composition of the shot of the girl with the eye. And let's slide this so it'll line up 
right at 13. Let's rename this to I and the second shot to dancing. Now let's select both layers, activate the 3D switch to place them in 3D space. Let's create a new camera. Select the 50 millimeter preset, hit OK. Now let's go to the dancing and hit P for the position properties. And what we'll do is let's hide the eye layer. And for the dancing shot, let's move it back 5,000 pixels in Z. Let's make this 5,000. Let's bring back the eye layer. And what I'll do is I'll switch to the left view. I'll pull back. So this layer is the shot of the girl with the eye and this layer is the shot of the girl dancing. So we'll move the camera. What we'll do is we'll right click, go to camera, create orbit null. Let's color code this purple. Go to the orbit null, hit P for the position properties. Right click, separate dimensions. And we'll be animating the Z position. So starting at 13, let's add a keyframe. And let's go to 14. Let's add a keyframe. All right, let's go back to active camera. And let's go back to 13, select this keyframe. And what we'll do is we'll give it a value of 5,000. We'll select the keyframes F9 for easy ease. And let's check it out. Perfect. Now what we need to do is this shot, we need to reposition it, select it P for the position property, and let's adjust the X value and the Y value. And let's go check it out. Perfect. Go back to the orbit null, go to the second keyframe, and this one, we can actually pull back more, minus 670. Perfect. Now, when it reaches 14 seconds, we want to see her eye. So what we'll do is we'll go back to this comp. We'll go to the circle mat, hit T for the opacity. At six seconds, let's add a keyframe. Let's step back five frames to 520, add a keyframe. Now jump to the second keyframe and let's make this zero. So this is what we get. And when we go back, this is what we get. Perfect. Now, this is really on transparent. It's not on gray. If we toggle the transparency grid, you can see that it's on transparent. Let's go to the dancing shot, go to effect, go to stylize and go to motion tile. And for the width and the height, let's make it 500 by 500 and let's mirror the edges. If you need to make it bigger, make it bigger. Now let's check this out. Okay. Now what I'll do is let's create a new adjustment layer. Let's place it right on the top of the layer stack at 13 seconds. Let's trim the end point. And what I'll do is I'll add an effect. Go to universe chromatic aberration. And for the distortion, we'll make it five. Now, if you don't have Red Giant Universe, what you can do is you can go ahead and add, go to Distort, go to Optics Compensation. You can click Reverse and give it a high value, for example, 70. To create the RGB split, I have a tutorial that shows you how to create that RGB split. Now I'll delete this, go back to the Chromatic Aberration from Red Giant Universe. And what we'll do is we'll animate the intensity. Hit T for the opacity. And at 13, we'll add a keyframe. We'll make this zero. So it starts out with none. At 13, 12, we'll make it 100. 
and at 14 we'll drop it to zero to turn it off and let's trim the out point alt right bracket for the out point select the layers and we'll add motion blur and let's check it out Now it's looking good, but what really helps as well is adding more elements in Z space as the camera travels from the first shot to the second shot. And I'll show you what I did. Let's deselect all the layers and let's go to the ellipse tool, double click to create an ellipse. And let's make it 500 by 500 pixels. And for the fill, I'll set it to none and for the stroke solid color and we'll give it a value of 10. And let's place it right below the eye layer and hit P for the position property. And what we'll do is we'll activate the 3D switch and for the Z value, let's make it 2800. Let's switch to the left view so you can see where that is. It's right here. The shot of the girl dancing is right here. The eye layer is right here. And the circle, this ellipse that we're creating is right here. Let's make another copy, Control D, Command D. And we'll make it 1800. It'll be right here. Another copy, Control D. And we'll make it 800. So these are our layers so far. Go back to active camera and let's check it out. And you can see that it really helps. What you can also do is you can add a vignette to darken. You can add some blur around the edges as well. You can add some particles or stock footage of particles. Let me show you the shot that I had that I worked on. And you can see that I added particles and I also added, this is Saber. So let me quickly show you that. That is simply Saber with the ellipse tool and just simply animating it out and using the tracker. So it's linked to the tracker. So it stays right on the eye. That is it amigos. Hopefully this gives you ideas of what you can do for this cool type of transition VFX shot.